Hello! So this video is a bit different. As you can tell from the title, it's about copyright. It's about the problems an artist has to deal with on a regular basis when they show their work, when they show their work out of their studio, on public places, and they have to deal with copyright infringements on a regular basis, which is the case I have to deal with as many artists, many, many artists in the world. I am not different. So this video is very different. It's very chatty, but you need to understand things. And I thought it was the time to say it a bit louder so that it would be maybe a bit more understood because there are laws, there are rights, there are things which are appropriate to do, things which are really not. And I see such unbelievable things from time to time on a regular basis that I thought that need to be addressed. We need to go in this direction today and to explain a few things. So I hope you don't mind me uh, posting this really. I, I thought it was really needed after what I've seen recently. And yes, let's talk about that. Let's see a bit more about copyright. So I thought it wouldn't be maybe a bad idea to repeat a few things and to explain a few things and maybe to go into more details. Because this weekend I had a very interesting case study. I wouldn't mention it here unless there were a few very important things which I thought would benefit others and would be interesting to explain. Before I went into the case study and explaining things about it, I wanted to mention and to repeat, it's something I have uh, written everywhere on my website. It is this sentence, all rights reserved. So when you see this thing, all rights reserved on something, it means the person, the company, whatever, has not given the right to use to your own benefit what they are doing. So for example, you see that under a film, on the website, you cannot use logos, music, all that, unless you have a written permission to do so. So in my case, all the rights are reserved on all my work, past, present, future. My dollhouses, my characters, my, um, my carriages, my teapots, my trophies, all the things I've done, all my techniques, the rights are reserved. I have started to do some workshop in 2008, so quite some time ago, and in 2016, I did an online version of that because it was really more um, convenient for people who lived really far and couldn't come to me. And I don't regret this choice. It was a wonderful adventure. I still like it. I continue it. There are things coming. Um, wonderful adventures have happened thanks to that. I met amazing ladies. I think there were a ton of positive things about it. I don't regret that at all. Of course, I knew starting there, there would be all the person who the imitators, the person without imagination, all that who would also come. So at the beginning of all my workshops, they were, they, I always have this video which explains really clearly that everything is made for personal purpose. What a personal purpose is, I even explain it. It's you are doing this piece of art, this creation, this thing for your family, for yourself, for your friends, for your circle, your private circle, not for the public circle. The moment you change the rule, you are doing something public, uh, the moment you do that, everything's changed. And then you can be under copyright infringement. And then you can, in French, we have this word plagia. A plagia is a copy when you can very clearly say it, where a very specifically um, count the number of, of similarities between the original artwork and the copy. So it's more mathematical, if you will. I'm going to tell you also a few stories about that to illustrate that so you can understand very well. It's not going to be very long, but I really need to address that and to explain it really well. So many years ago, I knew a lady who was very rich and this lady uh, was also an artist, sort of artist, and she was doing some collage, things like that. And she loved using the, the brands and the logos like Chanel, Louis Vuitton, all that. So she kept that in magazine and she glued that, or she took the photo of it and she included these things into her artwork. I see that sometimes also on Etsy, on all this website from time to time. And this is, to me, unbelievable. I say that to the lady once. I say, you know you can't do that. You know you cannot use Chanel logo and this logo because you like it, because you think it gives a bit of value to your artwork. You cannot do that unless you have a written permission from them. And I thought she had, and she had nothing. She just replied to me, but this is my photo. I can do whatever I want with my photo. 
Absolutely not. You cannot use a photo of something you like because you are going to use it and it's now your photo. This is still Chanel brown. This is still Chanel logo, Louis Vuitton logo, whatever. So it is absolute copyright infringement. I want to use a piece of music I really like. I buy it on iTunes, on Amazon. I want to use it in my video, for example. This is absolute copyright infringement. So I receive in the second an email from YouTube saying to me, you are under copyright infringement. You don't have the rights to use this, mu this music. You didn't compose it. You didn't pay something to the composer. You are under copyright infringement and you are going to pay the bill. So for example, you watch my videos, you know I often use some music in my videos. I pay the license to use it, the professional license, which is made for professional people who are doing videos. So it's not um, something you can buy in normal classical platforms like iTunes or Amazon. It is another, another circuit where you can buy that. And you pay a bigger fee and depending on the use you make of this music, you uh, will have to pay a certain fee. And it is professionally uh, agreed between you and the, the composer which use you are going to do. Just to explain, nobody can do whatever they want because they decide that. And for artwork, for visual artwork, it's absolutely the same. It's not because you decide you like an artist's work, an artist's work um, you are really fascinated by their work, you have now the knowledge of few things they do because you have been in their workshops that you can do whatever you want unless you have a written permission from them saying to you you can do whatever you want. I didn't give this to anyone just so you know. I'm alive, I'm not dead, I still have the hope to accomplish few things in my life so I don't give the rights to anyone to copy imitate my work. Now I'm going to arrive to my case study. So this weekend I thought at the beginning there were no problem. I saw a lady, I've been report, someone reported that to me, a lady who came to the workshop. She did a few workshops. I think she enjoyed them very much, not a long time ago. I can't remember really, but it was, I didn't check that, but not a long time ago. She was very, very excited. I don't think she knew me for a long time either. She um, visited my website, I could tell that, because she started to copy a lot of things. And she did a blog post and then she put that on her Instagram account with a lot of photos. I just click quickly and say, oh, that's a lot. So maybe she has crediting every photo. So crediting is be every time you do, for example, a copy of something, you mention something, you talk about something, you put a name, a name of a website, address of a website, the name of the person, a link which works. You do this thing. This is crediting. It doesn't mean the person gave you the permission to do that, but at least you are less you are less in a bad position than if you don't do it. This lady had posted many photos. I randomly click on three of them. There was no crediting. It was all her. It was her work now. Um, I don't think she did that intentionally to annoy me. I think she mentioned that to me and she said, I did it once. You didn't realize I crediting you three posts ago, something like that. I said, yes, but you have posted a lot of photos here. There are a lot of photos. This lady, I think is from an Eastern Europe country, um, Poland maybe, I'm not really sure. So I couldn't understand the comments really. There is one comment at some point I could read because it was in English. And I tell you that because you are going to understand. There are very legal things here, very important. This lady had no idea. She's not an artist, by the way, from what I've seen. I, I, I'm not going to stay too long on her case, but I just want to explain a few things. So I saw this comment in English very quickly. I spent a few minutes there. Um, the lady who was commenting said to her, suggested quickly, oh, your work is so amazing. You should absolutely get featured in this magazine. So here, you understand, you could have three heart attacks there, but you just stay quiet and you say, did I read what I read? Is it serious there? I mean, three posts ago, uh, before she started to post pictures of um, usage of my artwork and, and techniques, she wasn't doing anything. Suddenly she's an artist, um, suddenly, when you enter a workshop, you, you become artist. This is magic. Um, there is a problem here, of course, you can understand that. I was amazed by that and um, all the other photos I saw there was no crediting. Though there was, she was entering little by little in what I would call the blurry line when things start to get blurry. You don't want to be too precise about anything. 
A normal thing to do, a right thing to do, a legal thing to do would be every time you imitate, copy someone, you put a link, a name, a credit next to each photo. This is legal. This person, me in that case, I never gave permission to this lady to copy my work and to put that on her public place, which is her Instagram account. Instagram, social media are public places. This is not your private living room where you show things for your friends. This is very different. So first, it's always asking permission for sure and then to credit people, to put their name, their website, to mention you have doing this thing because you have done this workshop, you're not the artist, things like that. I didn't see that in her Instagram. Now I don't speak her language. Maybe she said a few things in her language for that. I have no idea in English for an English a visitor, there was no way to understand anyway. So I mentioned that to this person, I just say you need to credit everything every time you post a photo or you don't post the photo. As I said, my, the rights are reserved on my work I, and I don't give permission to anyone to copy, imitate, post photos with their name under it on their, any social media, blog, website, whatever you want. Also, it's not because you have the illusion to be famous on your platform, on your thing, that actually you are. Now we are going in a completely different direction because I'm not going to talk too much about social media and how these things sometimes, uh, it's an illusion at some point and people think they, have, they, have, they are actually powerful or famous or powerful or famous enough so they're entitled to do the things they do and they can do whatever they want. The laws protect the artist, the small artist, the big artist, the famous artist, just the same. The rule is the same for everyone and it's not because you think you are a bit famous because you have 2,000 followers. I don't know, I've been told that. I mean, just so you know, it's unbelievable sometimes the arrogance of people and how social media really make them believe that they have some sort of fame. We are still in the Andy Warhol thing, like the 15 minutes of fame. People are craving for that. So it makes them sometimes lose their judgments and lose uh, the view of the rights of the laws of what they should do and not do, really. You drive a car, you need to know how to drive the car and you need to know the, law, the laws of the road and what you're supposed to do. Otherwise, you have an accident, you kill someone and you kill yourself. It's just the same for, 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 for internet, it's especially on social media, blog, website, public things. You need to follow the rules. Just to give you a bit of context too, here in France, for example, Google, Amazon, these giants of internet have problems with the law because it's not because they are giant, they can do whatever they want. They can't do whatever they want here in France. They have to follow the French rules. So they have to follow the French rules. It's not the case everywhere in some countries because of their money, they can do whatever they want, but it's not the case everywhere. Um, the law protects the artist, the small and the big artists. So when you see this thing all right reserved on something, you can tell there is a propriety here and you cannot do whatever you want. How can people think that way, that you are entitled of certain things because you have, you suddenly you are a bit excited because of your likes and your followers and all that? This is amazing. The, the, the world is the same for everyone. So I hope you understood a bit better how things work. I'm always uh, happy to reply to questions when people have questions. Now, as I said, I don't give any permission to anyone to copy my work. I see that all the time. I've created my techniques this past 16 years and I have started to create things in paper in 1998. So it wasn't yesterday, as you can understand. No artist become artist in two days. We live in a world where people want to go fast and the problem for me when I have some problem with ladies, especially ladies with copyright, copyright infringements, is those ladies who don't want to work. The, the problem is always the same in the way they behave. I can tell that they want the recognition, they want um, some publicity, they want to be seen as artists and honestly they are absolutely not. First, when you start to copy, imitate, you're not an artist. I mean, who believe that? You're just starting to be an imitator. You, you are going from the sloppy, blurry line that yes, I just been in this workshop and now I'm an artist. I take all the things this person has done and it's mine. So. There is a problem here. I'm not going to go in the psychological side of it because for me, 
the moment someone copy, there is a problem. There is a problem this person doesn't want to address, but there is a problem. I have no problem with people imitating my work for private use. As I said, you post that on your private Facebook page, private things for your friend, you send emails, all that. No problem at all. I'm fine with that. I will never know you for that. On any public places, this is totally different. As I say, I don't give the right to anyone to copy, imitate my work. So when you see that, when you see other artists' work imitated, you should report that. From time to time, I see unbelievable imitations of other artists. And their style is so recognizable that I can tell in a second this is a copy. So please, be respectful, be careful also. There are laws and there are legal tools which artists can use to protect themselves, even when you think they are small and they couldn't protect and defend themselves because they don't have a lot of followers. I mean, I had to reply to unbelievable things this weekend, unbelievable. And it's a very good example of what I had. I could write a book on that. And it wouldn't be very optimistic about human nature, honestly. This side is the most depressing, stressful thing an artist has to deal with on a regular basis because you always have to be the policeman, which is so annoying. People should know the limits. They should know the boundaries on things you can do, things you can't do. And it's not because you have done some workshops that you have given the rights to people to do whatever they want. Just like it's not because a musician posts his music on internet that someone can copy the music or use the music as they see fit in their professional uh, project or all that. No, absolutely not. You need to follow the rules. There are laws and there are rules and they are there to protect people. Um, it's good to, to remember that. Even if you're not a professional artist, you are posting things, you need to credit them. I want my videos to be inspiring and um, uplifting, not distressful and all that, but I have sometimes to address problems when they come and to explain things when people I see are getting in the blurry line. So unless you have created your things, you have, you have done your work, you cannot take someone else's work and put your name under it and copy them, copy the sketches, copy... I, I, would, I would give you the list of all the things I've seen, all the people, I could do a list of people, you know, one day maybe I will do that, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't see all the photos of, of my imitators and that would be interesting. Anyway, I hope you are having a good day. I will, I will leave you on these thoughts. I hope you are not too depressed and not too pessimistic about human nature. I still believe that there are a lot of absolutely positive, um, respectful and honest people. I don't put everyone on the same bag at all. Most people I know who are coming to my workshop have no purpose of imitating of all that. Absolutely not. And I, under and I understand that very well. Don't worry. But there are a certain group of ladies who are in another group. Um, I wanted to do this for them. And also, if you have the temptation to do that with other artists, just the same, just the same. You cannot do that. You need, if you are an artist, if you want to show things, you need to work. And it takes time and it takes years. It doesn't take three seconds or a workshop of 15 days. Not at all. Really not. We live, in, we live in a strange, strange period of history, I think. I wish you a beautiful day. I thank you for your support, for your encouragements, for your kind comments. You can always ask me a question under this video if you didn't understand something. And for now, I will leave you here and I will see you soon with my Bed Canopy Part 2 and all the Madame Donois series.